Welcome to the Waiver Wire Wizards. This is our week seven preview. My goodness, folks, it's been a crazy time in the world of fantasy football. You're either crying, you're cheering, or you're waiting for something good to happen with your own team. You're joined by Todd Oxtra this week and Sean Nias. Sean, how are you? Sean, this is me getting my butt handed to me right here. Last week was brutal. It was over before it began. So we're in therapy session for a preview of week seven, buddy. Yeah, week six was an interesting bag of games. Um, it's it's really there weren't a lot of games I loved this week, but there were some very interesting outcomes of those games. Um, no major upsets, but I think that's where we're going to look at, you know, who stepped up and who stood down when the call was made for your fantasy rosters to roar. So, folks, before we get into it, we got to sp- thank some very special people that make this podcast for Patreons happen. That's our besties. Derek Trevelyan, a.k.a. Figure Dude. Francie, a.k.a. April's Hairdresser. XCP, that's Mr. Luke Lore. Charlie's Uncle Tim. Friends with Benefits. We've got Shehob. Shehob is a new member this week. She was, uh, and I'm not sure if it's a she or he, they were on a trial and they converted to a regular member. So thank you so much. And Sean, since we normally, when a new member comes in, we do something special for them. This is what we're going to do. For Waiver Wire Wizards, um, we are going to um, assign them a... What do you think? I'm trying to think because I'm trying to think how could we make this work for Waiver Wire Wizards? Do we assign them like a mascot? Do we assign them a... A position. Um, I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, I think it would be fun to assign them a team to follow. Mm. Very, very good. So with that, Sean, um, I grew up in Michigan. You grew up in Minnesota. I I I enjoy the Vikings because my dad raised them. They're my favorite team. I feel pity for the Lions and want them to win. Uh, you're a part-time Chiefs fan. If the Vikings are, uh, you know, if the Vikings are going to win, you want the Chiefs to. So let's pick a team that needs some love. But has so a good I fan think, base. Yeah, I'm going with a little mafia up north where it's cold in New York. The Bills. The Bills. What do you think? I can tell you what I'm not going to do, which okay. Henry is still shaking his head with. When Charlie uh, uh, gave him the superpower of spaghetti hands, um, (laughs) he still doesn't live that down. I agree. The Bills are one that is a great fan base, super fun, great pregame. The other one that I would consider is the Colts. They need some love, but that fan base is so fun, as you can tell by my Peyton Manning jersey. Those are the two. I mean, you know, the Vikings, I, I... would recommend everybody to go to us bank stadium once and experience that environment, but bills mafia, baby. And you can be, when you go to Buffalo, you can be in a Vikings Jersey and you're still going to have a good time. That's oh, yeah. really cool. It's not like Philadelphia where they're going to throw quarters at you and right. <laughs> put you in jail in their stadium. <laughs> so I let's agree. do this, Sean, let's do this. So let's, let's make it a little bit fun. One AFC team, one F- NFC team. How about that? Okay. Go Bills. Uh, AFC is my choice. NFC, who's your choice? I would pick the Vikes, but I'm not going to be a homer. I would say go Seattle. All right. Seattle. Um, you know, they're in an interesting spot right now. Uh, so I think it's a good time to be a fan because um, I think they're on the rise. So we'll go with that. So Shehab, you officially now, as part of the Waiver Wire Wizards, have become a champion for the uh, New York, or the New York, the Buffalo Bills. And, oh my goodness, the Seattle. And it's kind of funny, it's like coast to coast. So the Seattle Seahawks as well. So enjoy those teams. And if you have one that you follow, let us know. And we'll go from there. Um, and hopefully you join us for the ride. Uh, but then we go back to John Dorf. Oh my goodness. John, thank you for following us. We've got the Phoenix Sisters Entertainment. I just saw Kelly just won a uh, cosplay award. So congrats to that, Kelly. Brandon Myers. Oh, Brandon. uh, He's Sean. He's a Mets fan right now. So he's deep in it. 
So I'm hoping he gets a win. I'd love to see the Mets uh, finally get back into it. Got Corey in HD. He's a fan of the Browns. Poor Corey. <laughs> Poor Corey. And Matthew Keel. Oh. He's a Philly guy. He is a Philly guy. So there we go. And then we've got to thank our wonderful secret friends, Super Squad, Sean, Stella, and Henry Nias. And Sean, may your children never uh, be against your own teams. That's where it's when you have a house divided, nothing worse. I think we need to switch this up because self-praise is not cool. I should say uh, we should change that to say, Rachel lets me podcast. Ah, okay. Okay. So that's the reward. (laughs) (laughs) Well, very, very good. All right. Well, very fun. Uh, Thank you all for being patrons. And if you're on a trial like Shihab was, um, you know what? Check out everything we got. Give us some feedback. Let us know. And um, we hope you follow us for more good content that's ad free and first for patrons. So moving on, Sean, before we can look forward, we got to look back. Week six, we had a couple of teams that were on buys this week. Hopefully, it's going to bring them back to a better position, which would be one of those teams would be our Vikings, which we hope that Aaron Jones is a little bit uh, you know, better for wear. And we also get J.J. Hawkinson back next week or this TJ. week coming up. What did I say, J.J.? I don't know. We, already, we don't uh, need our okay. J.J. on the Vikings. We've got two J.J.'s. That's good. Hopefully, uh, J.J. McCarthy comes back healthy. Um, the Hawk is coming back. Hopefully, he plays. It's up in the air. Um, the other part that I'm really happy about is getting Cam Akers. Uh, I oh, watched yeah. him play uh, in the Texans game when they were blowing out the Pats. Uh, clearly, the Texans feel that Mixon's back, and that's why they traded Akers over. Mm-hmm. That was great. At you know, I know um, they wanted to keep him, but he went over to the Texans. Texans traded him back to us. He knows the system. I am liking that ad. Um, but it does concern me as a guy who has Jones on my fantasy team. Are we looking at something that might be lingering? I don't know yet. Injury report was released today, the first one. But what 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 does limited mean, right? Yeah, yeah. So. Um, it's it's funny because it's not funny. Sorry, it's it's sad that um, the Lions, you know, they're looking to have a, a big comeback after a big game against Dallas. They lose one of their best defensive players. Holy crap, he's out for the season. Um, they may be looking to shore up another uh, player to help uh, their team out. But man, it's yep. Aiden Hutchinson's a stud, and uh, he is like the heart of that defense. So um, hope he's he's doing okay. He's a Michigan boy. He's the sack leader. He was number one in sacks in the league and number one in pressures. It's crazy. It's crazy. I mean, he is playing like an absolute stud. The good news is, according to the surgery, he'll be back in uh, six to eight months. I also saw a report it was an eight to tw- 10 month injury. That really stinks because, as much as I am a Vikings fan, Detroit was the best looking team in the NFC. So oh, that yeah. really stinks. Especially after putting a pound in on Dallas and whoo. Um Matt. I was we... a happy, happy guy watching that game. <laughs> you know they wanted to just shove it when they did the hook and ladder with Penny oh, yeah. Sewell. And then he scored. I'm like, oh God, talk about a high level of disrespect, right? Dang. Anyway, it was a good thing to see. Absolutely. So um, if, if you know, you folks have any highlights of the games of uh, last week, uh, let us know that you want to call it like get where your top performers. Let us know this week. We're going to talk about based on week six, who we're going to buy, who we're going to rent and who we're going to return from our teams. So, Sean, for my team, um, it's, it's going to be pretty simple. Um, I made the right decision. I played Jared Goff. <laughs> I could have played. Good man. Could have played. Um, I, I could have played Geno Smith. I didn't. Good decision. DeAndre Swift had a really good game. That worked out really well for me. Um, you know, and then just the the regular uh, suspects on my team. Drake London had a hell of a game. Uh, uh, Kenneth Walker, another good game. I didn't really have a stinker. Oh no, I did have a stinker. The guy I picked up from uh, Indianapolis. Uh, I can't remember his name. He laid an egg. He had like 15 points a week before. He's like their Gabe Davis. He either has a great game or he does nothing. So I I ditched him like a bad habit. So um, when it comes down to Jared Goff, he's my buy. 
you know, I think he's coming into his own. Uh, he is playing Minnesota this week, so it'll be interesting to see what I do there. But Gino is playing um, Atlanta, so that might be a better play there, you know, depending on. But you know, Gino's been Gino's okay. He's been reliable, picks, not buddy. great. I know, I know. Wait, like that Thursday game, he had two picks where it wasn't even close. Like, where are you throwing? You know, I was. It was like, rough. It, it was a painful game having, to watch too. Right, and I have DK. I obviously didn't start him, but no. It it feels like Geno starts slow and then sort of gets it together. Yeah, because um, I didn't look at who um, my opponent was starting, but the, on Friday morning when I looked at it, I'm like, oh, geez, he started Kittle. Mason, and then he picked up the kicker from San Francisco. I'm like, who does that? That guy just got signed and put into the starting lineup, and he got him 12 points. I'm like, crap, it's over. <laughs> it's over. <laughs> um, let's see. So this week, uh, my based on performance by Jared Goff, you know, rent. Um, it, my my rent this week was uh, you know DeAndre Swift because because he's on a buy this week so I rented him last week he got me some points so he's going to be sitting out this week and then my rent, my my return was I can't even remember his name he was that idiot on Indianapolis who got me zero points I'm like oh no this is bad but you know what Sean I didn't need it I had top score in the league 158 points um, I beat the team I played by 20 points and currently Sean. I am uh, four and two. I am the top scoring team in the league and I have, and I'm the third in points against too. So, you know what? I'm not a faker. Come at me. I dude, I'm living vicariously through you <laughs> because <laughs> did I not say like, I think it was our week three or week four podcast. Like, dude, I love your team. You've got a well-balanced team. You're going to score. You've got the team. You've got the players that are performing. Me, on the other hand, I don't. My buy this week is the Steelers defense. You know, you had a crap week when your defense is your buy. Oh, yeah. My my rent is Brees Hall because he looked good on Monday night. Oh, yeah. He got me he like woke up points. <laughs> um, my return is Marvin Harrison Jr., uh, more from the Bears, Jacobs from the Packers, and Barkley from Philly. Guess how many points those guys got me? Uh, I'm going to say 22. 13. What? <laughs> 13 points. <laughs> what is this league coming to? <laughs> I mean, I'll be honest with you. Until Jacobs starts scoring touchdowns, I'm not starting him. He's got one score. Oh, and then Barkley was not even used. I'm like, Nick, what are you doing? Nick, Nick, buddy, Sirianni, buddy, what are you doing? <laughs> you you got to use him. You know, Sean, the funny part was we're like, oh, we're going to sit Zay Flowers. And what does he do? Gets 22 points, has a great week. I'm like, what? I dropped him. I know. I know. I know. Uh, we We need to have an overreaction section because... I dropped Bowers. I dropped Flowers. Mm -hmm. yep. They've all been picked up. Uh, God, I dropped two other guys. And I'm like, what am I doing, Sean? I'm not holding to my rule. You know? yeah. It, the uh, um, We need a sanity check. Is that what it is, Sean? Yes. And it's it's amazing. I've got... I got to relook. And there's like five guys that I dropped that are picked up that are contributing. And... I just need to step back and I'm not going to quote Aaron Rodgers because he's a Packer, but the relax thing, uh, I'll quote, uh, Patrick. Cole, <laughs> Is it? He says that he says that to green Bay team every, like at, by week five, relax, relax. Right. Hey, secret friends unite. Let me tell you about Zencaster. We use them for our show, and now they're supporting us. Zencaster is now the all-in-one solution making podcasting easy. It's the ultimate web-based podcasting solution. It provides high-quality audio and video podcast production and hosting. With a full suite of professional tools, podcasters can seamlessly record, produce, and publish studio-quality content all from one dashboard. 
being a creator has never been easier. And we chose Zencaster because of the ease of use, uh, high quality output, and we it makes it super easy for our guests to come on. Uh, we had multiple solutions we tried before, and Zencaster has just been the best fit for us. Why Zencaster? It's now super easy to record a podcast with Zencaster. Log in using your browser and start recording a high quality podcast right away. Record studio quality sounds and up to 4K video with your guests. Feel a sense of Zen knowing Zencaster's multi layered backups ensure you always have your recordings in the highest quality, even if the connection is unstable. Have you ever worried what you sound like? Zencaster's post production process makes you sound buttery smooth. It automatically removes those ums and ahs in your recording. It removes those awkward pauses in conversation, too. Set the right podcast loudness and levels while reducing background noise with the click of a button. So, if you're interested in making an easy, high quality podcast just with the click of a browser button, Go to Zencaster.com slash pricing and use my code SFU1. You'll get 30% off your first month of any Zencaster paid plan. I want you to have the same easy experiences I do for all my podcasting and content needs. It's time to share your story. Now back to the show. Okay, Sean, uh, at this point, I think I want to talk about the best available players in my league um, from each position. So basically based on their performance last week. So these are available players. Let's start with quarterbacks. We've got Drake May, Bo Nix, Justin Fields, Trevor Lawrence, Andy Dalton. And then just below is Joe Flacco and Spencer Rattler. But obviously, Drake May is playing Jacksonville. Eh, maybe not a bad idea. Bo Nix is playing New Orleans. Eh, not a lot of offense there. Justin Fields playing New York Jets. Trevor Lawrence playing New England. Andy Dalton playing Washington. Joe Flacco playing Miami. So of those, if you had to choose a quarterback, I don't need a quarterback, but if you'd said, hey, Todd, if you, you needed one, and I'm assuming this is very similar to the other leagues, would, would anybody take a run if they had a bye week on any of these quarterbacks? Well, I would have said Fields, but according to reports, Russ is getting first-team reps. And I just literally, before this podcast watched the Pittsburgh um, Vegas game. There was a series where Fields missed on three straight throws, everybody by a country mile. Like, That's not good. And then there were screen passes where he was throwing it over folks' head. His, his mechanics are like on and off. It was, it was really bad to watch. And I think by watching, I can see why they're thinking about making a uh, uh, change because these guys were wide open and he couldn't hit them. I get he's running. He had two, I think he had two rushing touchdowns and he didn't, you know, fumble, but those were pitch and catch throws. Mm. So I would play the matchup if the team you're, you're looking at versus the quarterback and the defense is suspect against the pass. Quite honestly, you don't want to be in my boat because my boat right now is I haven't found my quarterback yet. I've got Burrow and that's my only one on the roster right now because I picked up Tank Dell and dumped mm -hmm. Aaron Rodgers. Okay. You don't want to be searching for a quarterback right now. No, no, that's it's very situational. Sign. I mean, you could say, I mean, right now it seems like maybe Drake May is going to find his way. He's playing at Jacksonville, um, you know, and maybe Trevor Lawrence pick him up to play against New England. I, I, those would seem like the ones New that seem like so played well against the Texans. And let's be honest, Jacksonville is a hot mess. I could see if Jacksonville loses to the Patriots, somebody's gone. So Drake may might not be bad. He didn't look sure. He's not a, um, he's not a polished quarterback by any means, mm -hmm. but he did add, I believe he had three touchdown passes. Yeah. I mean, he, he got 24 points in my league. Although if you look overall, that's one game because <laughs> right. total fantasy points is 26. So that means that essentially you're saying is one game, a fluke or a mm. trend. And one game, don't make a trend. So buyer beware. 
Bo Nix might be an option, though. New Orleans, okay defense. Seems like Denver's feeling a little bit better. So we'll see how that goes. Running backs. We're looking at this, Sean. This is a little bit more slim pickings. Really, it is. I mean, you got to basically looking for handcuffs and maybe looking for somebody on a buy. Uh, Ray Davis, uh, he's playing Tennessee. He got 18 points. Uh, And then after that, I'm just looking here. I don't see a name you'd even recognize from. Yeah, I don't. I don't see anyone remarkable at this point. So I, I don't know. I wouldn't even say. I don't know who is trending. If I look at total points available, who's there available? Justice um, Hill. He's he's hit or miss. Tank 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 Biz, Big, Bigsby, Tank from uh, um, Jacksonville because uh, Travis Etienne's hurt. Um, Tracy from the Giants if he's available. He looks, Tank is not available. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man. I, I, quite honestly, if. Uh, Jones isn't starting. You may want to take Acres because Ty Chandler looks like crap for the Vikings. Yeah, I not, and I'm good for I'm I'm really good for for my running back, so I'm good to go. But Tyrone Tracy is also gone too. So at this point, depending on your league size, the the you know it's getting very painful to look at your waiver wires. And if somebody's on a and if somebody's on a a buy and leaves something out there because they have a, a tight league, you might want to pick something up if you don't need it at this point but you might need it in the future if it's somebody's on a buyer currently. Um, wide receiver um, at this point, Alan Lazard. Um, he's having a good season so far, but, but remember, we also know big boys coming into town. He so is, He is now a W3 or a wide yep. receiver 3, WR3. Yep. Um, Amari Cooper's probably owned in most leagues. Mm-hmm. And... Um, Let's be honest. Until they bench Deshaun Watson for um, Jamison Winston, James, there's no point in starting anybody from Cleveland. I know Nick Oof. Chubb is coming back, but there's nobody left to um, – uh, one second. We got a <laughs> Hello. Aw. Anyway, um, I think Nick Chubb, after he gets going, is going to be a serviceable running back. But from the wide receiver side, you've got Jerry Judy mm-hmm. for the Browns. I, 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 I just don't see, you know, an option there. Um, I mean, I'm looking at wide receivers that are still there. I'm thinking Tyler Lockett might be a good pickup. He's had a very consistent season, averaging 11 uh, points per game. Um, at this point, they're playing Atlanta. So, you're, I mean, you can score points against Atlanta. Obviously, it's going to be a high-scoring game. So maybe Tyler Lockett is a guy you pick up if you just need a about a 10-point game. Yeah, the other thing that I was thinking, give me a second, because sure. everybody and their brother on New Orleans is hurt. Yeah. from You know what I mean? That's yep. uh, Rattler true. played okay. <laughs> so... Maybe he'll have a good, you know, maybe he's he's got the rust off him and maybe he'll come back. He'll look a little bit better. And it's the the, the other thing. Remember what we talked about the last couple um, podcasts is Thursday games are starting to produce points because the offense mm-hmm. is starting to get going. Yep. I mean, Camaro is clearly a play, but Olave and Rashid, uh, uh, Rashid Shahid is injured. Yeah. I. He's on IR. Or is he? No, um, just questionable. Questionable. Because I have him. Yeah, he's he's questionable. Yeah, he is no I, I, D I doubtful. He is doubtful right now. I don't I don't it's Mason Tipton Bud Me Bub means Bub. I mean Bub. it's a cool football <laughs> name, Bub means. But I'm not sure Bub is gonna get me what I need. <laughs> no. I Isn't mean, Bub the name of the grumpy cat? <laughs> grumpy cat's name, Bub. So what's interesting about that Thursday night game is you've got so much, so many injuries on, on uh, um, New Orleans. The question I have considering that it was a 10 to nine game for the jets in Denver, 
when mm-hmm. Denver won 10-9, does Denver's defense become a play? Because they literally Could. only have Alvin Kamara. Could. It, it's, oh man, it's going to be interesting on Thursday night. It definitely will. So really quickly on tight ends available, um, you know, it's interesting. Uh, Cole Komet is on a bye this week. But if you need a tight end in the future, he may be a good pickup if you are, you know, lacking a strong option where you can flex. Um, So he may be an option. Hunter Henry, um, he's available playing at Jacksonville. He could have a decent game. And Noah Font has been... You know, non-existent, not great. But quite honestly, when I look at available tight ends, it's pretty much a desert. So I would say maybe the play is pick up Cole Komet if you have a decent uh, tight end and you need somebody for a future bye week or you want to play a flex. uh, If Cole Clement is out there, I would get him. Yeah, he's on my other league. That that's a great play. Now, um. I have some considerations um, and we'll talk about it when we get there because Evan Ingram is available in my league and I'm pondering starting him this week because he got 10 targets from Trevor and it's really all I got. <laughs> he was, and I'm like, I drafted him high and I, I, I dumped him I and if he comes back, of course, then I'm going to be like, of course he does. Don't you have of course he does. I do. I do. I got Bowers I'm, and yeah. yeah. No, I'm fine. I'm fine. He's doing great. And I dropped Bowers like an idiot. I had Pitts and Bowers, and both are picked up. And I went with uh, Tucker Craft from Green Bay. Mm. But the problem with Green Bay is love spreads it around so much. Yeah. So you've got... Uh, Watson, though. Watson, not... I I don't know if he's going to play. So it might be more, more play to the tight end. We'll see. Yeah. Um, let's go. To, let's go to defense, Sean. Really quick. Defenses available right now. Uh, at, uh, right now available. Um, if you look at points, we've got Packers playing the Houston. We've yep. got the Giants playing at Philly. Bucks playing at Baltimore. Uh, nope. Browns playing at Cincinnati. Lions playing at Minnesota. The problem is there's just not a lot of good defensive matchups this week. You don't got uh, from what from what's available. I mean. Um, right. Colts maybe at Miami might be a good play. They have maybe. the assets on defense. Mm-hmm. That could be a play. Um, quite honestly, Washington I think, playing at Carolina might be a play. Yes, that's a start. That's an absolute start. Because okay. um, I think the Vikings are, it's going to be a high scoring game. And quite honestly, with Hutchinson out and the fact that Detroit does have a questionable secondary. I know they drafted heavy. I think they took two corners in the first two rounds. You are asking a first year corner to go against Justin Jefferson and Jordan Addison. Yeah. That's not a good combo. Yeah. I'm excited. I'm so excited to finally get this team like not hobbling. That's going to be fun to watch. So once again, try not to put my homer head on right now and talk too much about the Vikings. But there we go. So that is what I'm looking at, folks. I mean, if you need a kicker, it's pretty much player's choice. So look who's available because kickers are highly erratic, except for my kicker, who is like one of my MVPs. Uh, Young Ho Koo has just been giving me about 10 points a game. So you know what? I'll take that for my Will kicker. The thrill. Todd, Will the Thrill from the Vikings is not a bad kicker. No, he's got, no, he's amazing. He's nine, nine, nine attempts. I think he has three or four from 50 yards, and he doesn't have a miss. Brother's got a leg. Does your league award points for um, length? Yes. Of, of yardage, over... not length. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> we don't need to get into the horse conversation that New Heights. No, 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 no. No, this is a family no contest. Program. It is. It is. Um, absolutely. Absolutely. But yes, um, 50 yards and more is four points. If they boot a 60, it's five. This year, it, it feels like 50 is not like questionable anymore. It feels like 50 is 
one of those situations now where it used to be, God, 50 yards. I'm not going to do that. Now it feels like eh, 50 is just like the new 40. <laughs> What's interesting, though, is like Tucker from Baltimore. I think he's missed three or four from 50. Um, where you got the young guys there. Do you remember Sebastian Janikowski? Oh, yes. What was he? The uh, he, that guy was a beast. The Raiders like had the rare like was he a like early round draft pick? I can't remember what he was drafted as. They picked him in the first round. <laughs> That's what I thought. You, he had a yeah, great but, career. He's a Hall of Fame kicker. That dude yeah. hit 60 yarders. I mean, he looked like the guy that you'd find at the bar that was a big time beer drinker. Yeah. But yet he knew how to kick. He's like the John Daly of kickers. <laughs> Cigarette in his mouth. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, you know, like we're in Zubaz. <laughs> throws out the but, cigarette, chugs a beer. Yeah. <laughs> and the dude could hit. Um, I yeah. think Will the Thrill is that same guy, except what's funny is when you see a picture of him, he looks like he's still in high school. That's funny. But he gets his job. We were, we were having a discussion, Sean. Um, so my son, Logan, he was playing at his college uh, band performance. And my buddy John's like, I feel old because these college kids look so young. And I'm like, yeah, if you look back, we looked older. I don't know why we looked older. But yeah, kids just look seem younger now. I don't know why. It's weird. But yeah, it's the skincare products. That's true. All, all the manscaping, <laughs> all the all the 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 all that stuff is making us much they got better. Per- perfect, uh, as they said in Sandlot, lotioning and oiling, and uh, too much Axe body spray. Holy cow! I don't know what girls do. It's probably like Bath and Body Works stuff, and it's like holy cow! Um, I'm being choked. Is that true? Yeah, I'm having a conversation with Henry. Because um, I've got this cologne that's cedar wood and <laughs> bourbon. And he's like, Dad, I got to put some man spray on. And I'll be careful where you in, spray, Henry. And I'm like, Dude, how many pumps did you put on? Oh, six or seven. I'm like, <laughs> whoa, whoa. Hey, that's uh, my cologne. And B, they are going to smell you from afar. My wife had a funny comment. She's like, okay, first and foremost, if you're trying to attract me, I don't want bourbon cedar. I want wine. Ah, uh, <laughs> wine barrels, good like point. a Cabernet, Sean. A good yeah. Cabernet. There you go. Yeah. And as my wife would say, oh, my goodness, that beer smells like so sour and gross. I'm like, oh, okay. So that's not the, that's not the fragrance you want. Oh, to Budweiser or anything like that. Um, we clearly, we clearly cannot start a after dark podcast because we don't have it. No, no, no. We, ha- yeah, we, yeah, we are definitely not in that crew. Uh, it's funny because the, um, the, uh, Corey in HD and the, in the, in the boss rush, they do an after hours podcast. So if you want something a little bit more mature, one of your questions asked about the world of, uh, adulting, check that one out. So yeah. Sean, um, we'll stick with we get, works. exactly. We'll get into, um, our schedule. Um, for what's happening week seven for the NFL and who you suggest. We're going to pick the games and who you suggest to pick up from those games if they those players are available in that team. So let I me have, the league. I'm, I'm not going to lie, Todd. Schedule. Yep. I've got a hot mess this week. So I do I, not have yeah. ideal starts. I mean, you're the guru. Um, you're clearly doing much better than I am. And I'm like, I can't go three and four. I'm playing the top dude in the league. And I'm just like, my gosh, who do I go with here? Cause okay. I've left way too many points. Um, I left way too many points on the table, especially for, uh, not this week. This week I would have lost either way. Yep. But um, four and five, I should have won. I just got done. Got it. But got it. Let's, okay. Let's go through them, pick them, and yep. then what I'll Absolutely. do is I'll share with you after that. 
Uh, and you, my, my you tell me who your key decisions are this week. Yeah, you tell me who your key are decisions, and then I'll give you like my rationale, and then you can make a decision or throw it in the trash. So there we go. Or do you use the t- Todd picked it? Go against it. That's a win. <laughs> we'll see how this goes. All right. We got our Thursday night game. Thursday night. We got Denver at New Orleans, the big easy. It's going to be nice and cool. Uh, no tropical storms are in the area. Holy cow. Uh, New Orleans started on fire. They've cooled off. And Denver is feeling a little hot. Denver minus three over under 38 points. I'm going with Denver. There's too many injuries with the Saints. Um, I agree. I think Denver wins. Now, where I'm sort of struggling is, is this a game where Nix comes out because he runs well. Um, I think he's the perfect fit for Sean Payton's system. They just don't have a lot of assets around him. No. Williams is a lower tier um, running back. Decent, uh, but doesn't have explosive speed. Cortland Sutton is good, but sort of aging. I was going to say, know, I feel like he's been in the league. Like him and Jerry Denver. Judy, it feels like a different Denver. It feels like the all-star team of the worst Denver teams. And those are their, uh, their top receivers. Yeah. And, they're, you know, their defense isn't bad. Um, and with all the injuries that the Saints have, my stardom is Alvin Kamara, and that's it. <sighs> now, if you want to roll the dice and play the Thursday game, you know, where, you know, Thursday is going to be a scoring game because of prep. I'm siding with Denver just because there's so many. I mean, Olave, Shahid, Carr, Taysom Hill. I mean, you go up and down the lineup, injuries galore, injuries on their defense. Um, I'm going to go with Denver. And the one that I don't know from, you know, I'm not starting – Spencer Rattler, you know, why? Second start. (laughs) If you're desperate, yes. Denver's defense has been decent. In -hmm. larger leagues, I might start uh, Williams from the Broncos, but even that is a questionable start. It's, I think it's going to be low scoring. And Denver wins by a touchdown. Yeah, I, I feel that too. Um, the only player that's impacted for me is um, R- Rashid Shahid. He's doubtful, so I, he's my flex player currently. I will demote him. So I'll be looking to uh, see what makes the most sense. It's either going to be Tyreek Hill or Tony Pollard, uh, most likely Hill. sliding in. I'm going Hill. Okay, there we go. Let's go to... Sunday games and we have another England game. Oh my God. Trying to find out who's carrying the game was a pain in the butt. I thought it was going to be Peacock. I thought it was going to be this. Nope. It's the NFL network. I'm like, geez, oh, Pete's <laughs> it's so confusing folks. Um, New England at Jacksonville. Sean, you know, the UK, you know, they have some issues with us. They've got to have a big issue that we gave them this game. Holy smokes. Um, at this point, we've got Jacksonville minus five and a half. Uh, over under is 43 points. Uh, I don't want to pick have either Jacksonville of them. favored? Yes. Yes. By five? Oh, okay. I don't gamble, but I'm taking New England in the points. Okay. All right. All right. All day long. Um, yeah. I just don't have any faith in Jacksonville at this point. Um, Unless they're really behind and they just start throwing crap up, I, I just I just don't know. Um, but yeah, let's go with New England on that game. I uh, let's see, do I have anybody on either of those teams? Um, so I I, I do preferably not. wouldn't start anybody, but Stevenson, obviously the running back from the Pats. Quite honestly, I might start Drake May because. Jacksonville looked uh, like unbelievably terrible against the Bears. <laughs> exactly. And 
And it's not like they were able to go home and practice. They stayed in Europe for another week. It's it's not like they had any sort of continuity and the folks couldn't go back to their house. They were sleeping in hotels. That's crazy. I, you know, I'm not yeah. touching Travis Etienne. Um, if I'm Jacksonville, I'm finding a way to um, trade him. Trade him while you at least could get something for him because the backup running back's better. In a larger league, I would start Trevor, maybe Thomas Jr., but let's be honest, uh, the Pats' defense hasn't been bad. No. I mean, it's been okay, but they've had no offense and they've had bright spots that just don't last that long. Drake May, I don't even know how he, how many points he got last week. 24. Interesting. So, Remember. yeah, that's right. He, oh, that's right. He, he basically had two points the week before. So, yeah, I mean, at this point, um, maybe it is. That I mean, I find really interesting here, Todd, is when we, when we went into the draft, everybody talked about how New England should trade out of three because their roster is that bad and you need picks to just get talent. He, the head coach has gotten a lot out of them. Mm -hmm. They weren't supposed to win any no. games this year, were they? No. And they won their first game. So, I mean, they're already well, up. I mean, they're, they're over under is pretty, pretty good right now for them. Yeah. For the number of wins. Um, and, you know, I mean, like you talked about Evan Ingram. I mean, you could play him if you need a tight end. Oh, that's yep. 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 I actually am pondering that. <laughs> but I just, I don't know. Cause if I'm new England, I'm taking Ingram away. Cause they can't run the football. Who mm -hmm. else does he have? And then on defense, <laughs> I couldn't tell you <laughs> the part that I find amazing is um, in the year that, Aiden Hutchinson was available for the draft and they had the, the first pick they took Trayvon Walker. Trayvon Walker has done nothing and they could have had Hutchinson. Think about that with Josh Allen, Josh Allen Jr. Walker's done nothing. I think they're up for a full systematic change. They're going to, they're going to gut the ship. They're going to have to. <sighs> I mean, because and, you just well, gave fifty five million a year to Trevor Lawrence. Uh, he's sticking around. Working. No, I mean, I, oh, they're I mean, for him for at least four, three. Four well, it's like years. Deshaun. It's like Deshaun Watson. It's like the. Uh, yeah, I, I feel like there is going to be a turn or the league is going to put some type of penalty on itself to stop the craziness with quarterback salaries. It's got to happen because it handcuffs you so much with everything else. But then again, what are they going to do? The league is probably then they're going to go high on the hog on some other position. And it just becomes like, oh, this, you know, it, it the problem with the problem with the quarterback position is if you're a starting quarterback, you reset the market. Yes. Every time. And I think the analytics is showing you don't necessarily have to do that. I think there's going to be a shift. I, Similar to I laughed. wide receiver salaries. I, I I laughed. I looked at Brock Purdy's salary when they showed it last week. It was like a hundred thousand or no, it was a uh, nine hundred thousand dollars. I'm like, that's just crazy. That's just crazy. More performance. Yep. He has a roommate. That's crazy. It's crazy. Uh, performance based contracts for quarterbacks would make more sense. Base salary plus how you perform wins, whatever you want to call it, probably makes more sense since they're, you know, that's what they're supposed to do. Just win it, baby. Okay, Sean, we move on to Seattle at Atlanta. Uh, old Kirky is playing pretty good. Seattle is, uh, they started fast. They are not doing well right now. Um, I'm thinking this is going to be a fun game to watch. We got Atlanta minus three, 51 points. Um, I'm taking Atlanta. I think they've got too many weapons. I, I think at this point, I just don't see Seattle coming to play. Here's the only question I have. 
Yep. Atlanta is lacking in the pass rush. You know, they've got Judon, who's the only pass rusher. I wonder if that comes into play. For me, I think Atlanta wins. It's a home game. They're looking good. I'm if if I've got Kirk, I got Robinson, London, and Pitts. They're strong starters. On the Seattle side, my you know grade A starter is Walker. Mm-hmm. The dude looks amazing. Yep, fast, elusive. He is he scores touchdowns. I'm gonna I'm gonna throw this out there. Everybody likes King Henry. I think Walker is going to be running back one by the end of the year. I think so, because at this point, I mean, Henry is shown his age, and Walker's pretty young. He's what, uh, been in the league four years? Uh, year three. He's like 25. Um, okay. No, Henry has had like 120 yards and whatnot. Where I get to question around Henry is when it gets to cold weather, 25 is a lot different than 30, especially when you've had, on average, like 300 carries a year. You know, is he going to be, like we talked about, is he going to be like Earl Campbell, or is he going to be like Dalvin Cook, who burns out? We don't know. We'll have to let that play out. But I like Walker. I am sitting Gino. Dude throws too many interceptions. Turnover king. Yeah, a lot of trash yards. Yeah, a lot of trash stuff at the end. Um, yeah, I didn't play him last in my, in week. A he got 14 league, points. I'm a, yep, in a larger league, I'm going to start Tyler Lockett. Maybe even Smith and Jigba if, if you think they're going to rack up points. Mm-hmm. And they might have to throw because Atlanta's going to score. And you can tell that because Seattle just made that trade for the DT from Jacksonville. And that's another reason why, if you go back to the Jacksonville game, why Stevenson's is a big play, because they just traded away one of their starting defensive tackles. It's like they're throwing in the towel. That also makes me think Doug Peterson might get fired. I mean, when you've got that much money in your quarterback, uh, the promise of that team, and then at this point, uh, they're one and four, right? Are they... One and five. One and five. One and five. So at this point, I mean, what is he going to say to people that's going to make them think that, oh, you can get this team over the hump? More draft picks? More, they don't have cap room, I assume. And yeah, I, I that's not a good way to go. So Doug Peterson may be out. Yeah, and they're going to have All to right. like. We'll see what happens with Doug. Old Dougie. Yeah. Uh, Sean, Tennessee at Buffalo. Holy cow. Buffalo. Um, I feel like they've just been given a second lease on life. Amari Cooper coming in. He's a savior. He's going to give, uh, you know, Josh Allen finally a target that's worthy of something. What do we say at the beginning of the year? Who is he throwing to? We don't know. And they're still four and two. Playing well. That division's tough but winnable. Um, Here's something that's interesting. Dallas traded Cooper to the Browns for a fifth round draft pick three years ago. The Browns traded him to Buffalo for a third round draft pick. Jerry, retire. Don't be your GM anymore. (laughs) But anyway, actually keep being your GM. Keep being, make, oh, make yeah, those bad yeah, decisions. Yeah, I, I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. He just needs to, Sean, what did he say? I need to hire a different radio station to talk to me because I don't like the questions you're asking me. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, oh, Jerry. Um, Buffalo's <sighs> going to win this game. Yep. Uh, I would almost, I would watch the reports if um, Cooper is fitting in in this game. I would start him. I would bring him in and start him. But Allen's a for sure starter because he's going to get you yards rushing. He, oh, yeah. He's going to do whatever it takes to win. Um, he's going he's gonna to run for at least one touchdown, it feels like. Yep. And I am benching um, Levis, Ridley, and Hopkins because they're nowhere on the same page. 
It's just him. and Pollard. Uh, I I don't even know what to do with Pollard. I, I have him. He did really well last week. I've got him this week. I mean, I could move him up to a flex. Like I said, I've got him or Tyreek kills my flex. So I could e- move yep. to either. But I'm like, you know what? At this point, Miami doesn't have many weapons. So why not Tyreek? Right. And then uh, Dalton Kincaid, the tight end from Buffalo in larger mm-hmm. leagues. The only reason why I say that is for some reason, Josh just doesn't go to him. And I'm like, dude, last year he was huge. He made receptions. They got to take the Cooper edition and leverage the talent of Kincaid because Kincaid can catch. He's a great possession tight end. I, I wonder it's, if it's, Josh it's interesting. Do you feel like Josh feels like he just has to do too much? Like he feels like he doesn't have anyone he can truly rely on. So he's like, I'm just going to find out who can help me now versus uh, he has a reliable target. Like, you know, obviously when he had digs, but it, you know, maybe he'll settle down and he'll say like, Hey, I got my, I got Cooper got a tight end, you know, and then we're going to go with our uh, running back and maybe that can be the new tandem, but I'm hoping because I really like Buffalo and obviously uh, Shehab, uh, we want Buffalo to win for you too. Um, moving on to Cincinnati at Cleveland, the battle for Ohio, Sean. This is the Depression Bowl. Um, you know, Burrow, I've got him in my other leagues, my starting quarterback. Uh, T. Higgins is back. Um, Jamar Chase, I mean, it, it's going to be interesting this week. They should be able to start turning it around. Whereas Cleveland, I mean, uh, I feel like they should just go on a buy the rest of the season. <laughs> you know what's funny about this is, so I got Cincy winning. Um, I just Deshaun Watson is just so bad. Oh my goodness! I was watching that game. So there was a statistic from like 2008 forward quarterback rating of like 550 quarterbacks. He's dead last. And I think he's only starting because the ownership wants the money. to start. Well, yeah, you spend that money, what? you got to pay for it, which is just like, isn't that just like, what? Yeah. Well, it's bad ownership in Cleveland, and I feel bad for that. Absolutely. Because Cleveland's a great football town. Baker, um, look what he's doing, Baker's now. If they had a little more patience with Baker, built around him. I mean, Baker looks like a good quarterback now. Looks like a franchise quarterback. They destroyed uh, Tim Couch. Then they got stupid and drafted Johnny Menzel. I mean, they've just made bad decisions. So Stefanski's a good coach, Mm -hmm. but he's, he's sort of handicapped and you can tell they're in dump mode because Cooper's gone, Yep. but you've got a $73 million cap hit. If you cut him right. And you still have to pay the fully guaranteed contract. I feel like this. I feel like at one night we're going to wake up and the, the Cleveland Browns stadium is just going to be burned down to the ground. <laughs> it's like, I don't know what well, happens. I, <laughs> Cash in our insurance policy. <laughs> I, I, all I'm going to say to Cleveland is thank you. Minnesota no longer needs to be known with the Hersa Rocker trade. It's going to be the Deshaun Watson trade. Thank you. Absolutely. Very much. <laughs> but with that said, I am starting Burrow, Chase, and Higgins. Yeah, you're obviously going to sit uh, Deshaun Watson, and in larger leagues, I have no idea what to do. Do you do Chubb? I don't think so. You don't take a guy that just had a horrific knee injury and start him. Jerry Judy? Uh, no, I there. I mean, I don't know what to do. It's bad in Cleveland. No, no. it's really bad. Not a lot of options in the old mistake by the lake. Um, and hopefully Cincinnati can 
finally get it turned around because I like that team quite a bit. Um, Sean, this is this is really going to be a fun game for us. We got Houston at Green Bay. Green Bay, you know, Jordan Love looking like another quality uh, Green Bay quarterback. Uh, the line is minus two and a half Green Bay over under 48 points. Nico Collins is still out, you know, my savior um, still on IR. Hopefully come back in another two weeks. Uh, but at this point, do you have any faith that uh, Houston can carry over the win from last week and challenge Green Bay? I think Houston wins. Here's why. They've got a diversified group of targets. You got Stefan Diggs. Tank Dell is gr- good, right? Mm-hmm. You've got Mixon. Stroud doesn't turn the ball over. And on defense, you've got a pass rush. Will Anderson looked amazing this week. I mean, I am hoping that for the Vikes, Dallas Turner turns into Will Anderson because. The comps are similar, but the statistics are better for Dallas Turner. So Green Bay has got a tough game. The other thing is, I get that Jordan loves back, but if you look at him, he doesn't move around all that well. No, he's very uh, he's very sensitive on his, his back foot when he throws, um, and is how he moves. Now... Romeo Dobbs finally got his head on his shoulders, had two touchdowns. Mm-hmm. You've got Reed, you've got Watson, Jacobs. Uh, is Watson uh, is Parker. Watson questionable right now, though? Yeah, I think he is. They do have weapons. Yep. Um, but let's not talk about the highlights because of who they played. You know, I mean, that's true. They should have won that game. They that's true. Won that game. So. Let's see. Be, let's see how they do because um, the Texans' defense is really good. They're getting after the quarterback. Um, um, Stickley, the cornerback from LSU, is in his second or third year, is every bit as good as Sauce Gardner in New York. So I, I think the Texans go in and win. Um, they're a good team. And let's be honest, Stroud came out of uh, Ohio State. So he's used to loud crowds and playing where you've got a. The dude's just calm, cool, and collective. He's he's like Joe Cool. I've got Houston, too. So let's go. Let's go after those cheese heads. Got Miami at Indianapolis. Ugh. You know what? Indianapolis, I think, with Joe Flacco, feels like a competent team. Um, I think that um, is Joe Flacco starting or is Anthony Richardson finally coming back? Indianapolis has to come to the realization. Excuse me. Sorry, allergy season. Um when you have a quarterback like Anthony Richardson, who's immensely talented, but didn't have 25 starts in college, you sort of have to compensate that by giving him an opportunity to watch. Flacco needs to start. They're a better team with Flacco. The other thing that needs to happen, and from what I've looked at so far, based on the injury report, and you're going to have to check it, if Jonathan Taylor can go, you're, he is a s- absolute start. But I would do Flacco, Pittman, and Pittman's also injured. <clears throat> um, check your injury report. If they're healthy, absolutely. Because Miami's defense hasn't been the same because they lost a bunch of folks, Van Ginkle and Wilkinson, to free agency. But they also lost Phillips who came off of an uh, Achilles, but then blew his knee out two weeks ago um, with an ACL. So they don't have a pass rush and they don't have a fat guy in the middle to stop the run. If Taylor can start, 
Oh, he's a start one. And Flacco knows how to use play action. Mm-hmm. So that means Flacco and Pittman. For Miami, you start Hill and you hope he hits. Bradley needs somebody to throw to. And, you know, if he can make magic happen. I mean, he just, and if I'm uh, McDaniel, the coach for Miami, he knows how to create situations, end arounds, screens, bubble screens. And if you just give Hill some space, before you know it, he's gone. And then two tight ends to block, <laughs> bringing two tight ends to block, whatever right. you can do, uh, you know, run, run some creative uh, uh, formations and yeah, give your, uh, you give your best player time to make a move. In, in larger leagues, I, I would look at Moster cause it doesn't look like HN is starting, but Indy's winning this game. Yep. Um, so that'll be my key decision. We'll talk about that when I talk about my team. Really have one option out of that game. Uh, we go to, I think, probably the NFL's game of the week. It's got to be Detroit at Minnesota. This is the first time we've had a uh, a, a division that has been <laughs> four-plus wins at this point in the season. It's the cream of the crop, and I don't know who would have thought this. It's not panned out really well. Um, some teams have played some good talent. Other teams haven't. I would say at this point, Detroit, Minnesota, those are the real deal teams in this division. The other two, eh, based on who they played and gotten wins with. So, Sean, um, I am, after coming off a bye, Minnesota is rested and ready. Um, Detroit, um, coming off a high with Dallas, I think is going to come in a little bit overcompensating. Minnesota is a crappy place to play for other teams. I'm getting Minnesota. I think we're going to look good. I don't want to become or come across as a homer, but there's a few things for me that come to mind. You just lost Aiden Hutchinson. Big blow. There's an emotional toll there. Not only that, he was the heart of the defense. You don't have him. Now, I'm not one of those homers who are like, oh, great, he's gone. I'm happy. No, I want to beat the best team with the best players, you know, and I wish him the best of luck to get back yeah. on the field. I want kid. to beat the best, you know, but where I look at it is with us trading for acres who knows the offense, who's looked electric. We need that running game, especially when you look at the jets, when the minute Jones wasn't there, it was clear. Ty Chandler couldn't do it. Yep. Acres can. He knows the offense because he was in L.A. The other piece is Will Anderson is healthy. Or, sorry, not Will Anderson. Dallas Turner is healthy. Mm -hmm. And um, all of the dings and nicks, you know, are you're you're recovered. I think the Vikings win. I think it's going to be close. It's either going to be a shootout or a 21-24 game. Who am I starting? If you have to, you start Goff. But if you have a better option, I would. Gibbs, potentially, because I think Detroit's going to run a lot of screen plays. Williams, because potentially there could be a bomb. And then, obviously, JJ. Who I'm sitting, for me, it's the defenses. Because I don't know if I want to bet on a blowout or a high-scoring game. Um, In larger leagues, I could start Addison because I could see the Vikings running like a bubble screen or a wide receiver screen that he just sort of is gone. And then Laporta where he gets something over the middle or it's second and goal from the three and they run a play action and then they throw it over to him for a touchdown. Too early for Hawkinson. If he's back, there's, I think they're going to run him as a decoy if he plays. Yeah. I just, once Hawkinson's back in the lineup, oh my gosh. That's going to be fun to watch. Because you got probably fun to watch. Yeah. We've been, we've been playing very much an erratic, 
uh, bandage team, and now we're going to actually have some semblance of a real team. And who knew that Sam Darnold would get us five wins this season? Who knew? Um, moving point, on. Really quick. Yeah. Is Dalton Reisner has come off the um, uh, physically unable to, or the IR. The pup, the IR, okay. He is, he is the um, guard that's going to replace Ed Ingram. Ed Ingram, at right guard, of all of the starting guards with three starts or whatever, he's second to last. Wow. Dalton Reisner is in the top 15 based on pro football focus. So you're getting an, a guard. So that's another reason to look at the running game. I get that um, Detroit has a high pro fo- football focus score against the run. But if you're getting a top 15 guard, especially when you've got two bookend tackles and a left tackle, or, or I mean a left guard, uh, Brandon, you've got now a full offensive line that could be bulldozing <laughs> on the run. Yeah. When in doubt, you got to have good fat guys, buddy. Yeah. It's kind of a shame that Minnesota really hasn't had any primetime games so far, but I'm hoping that changes as they get some flex, flex in the league. But we basically were a, a, a noon, <laughs> a noon team. And uh, we are noon I again like this week. But flexes start next week. So yep. expect to see us moving to primetime. Yeah. I wouldn't give doubt it. Day notice. Yep. Uh, next, we move to Philadelphia at New York. Um, does anybody really like the NFC East? It's my least favorite division, uh, except for Washington. I really like Washington. Um, but I, I just do not like the giants. They're one of my least favorite teams just because I just find them so bland. Uh, but we've got to talk about this game. Um, let's see. I'm taking Philadelphia. I think they finally wake up. I I mean, they're minus three over unders 43. I'm taking Philadelphia because somebody has to win this game. So fast. Daniel Jones looked terrible um, in their last game. Um, But they didn't have neighbors. And if you look at the tape, that defense without Kayvon Thibodeau got after the quarterback. Burrow was under duress a lot. And they had really kind of, I don't want to call them stupid turnovers, but they did. That defense looks sound. The problem is, is Jones just, Daniel Jones missed a lot of like basic throws. Now, if neighbor plays, for me, I'm going neighbors and Tracy for the Giants. I actually just picked him up because the Phillies D is, I mean, they've got so many guys from Georgia that they drafted in the first round and they don't play as a cohesive unit. There's talent where the Philly defense alone should win. Um, I want to make a prediction right now, and I'm not a okay. prediction I'm guy. Let's go. Bill Belichick. Nostra, Nostra Shaughness. Nostra Shaughness. That's what we're going to call yes. you. Bill Belichick should coach this team next year. It's that would be perfect. amazing. I love he lo- that would be amazing. Ah, oh, Belichick at and Philadelphia. It just works. Yes, and they've got they've got everything, but they don't have coaching. Now, I've if neighbors is healthy, absolute start Tracy. I got Barkley and AJ Brown. I'm not starting Jones or Slayton. Slayton's got a, a an injury and he's tweaked, and then Jones is just inconsistent. And then um, for um, larger leagues, you got to think about Jalen. But I wouldn't be surprised if the Giants win because that defense with Burns, Kavon, and oh god, the, the fat guy in the middle, 
that everybody and their brother here in Minnesota wants them to trade for that they're not going to trade. Lawrence, they're they're playing good D. And if the Giants were to get like a 10-point lead, let's say they get a touchdown and then they get a mimic turnover and kick a field goal, that's tough for Philly. They're just they're just not playing as a team. And they're not using Barkley right. No. They're, it. I mean, you know you have trouble when you're told you've got to fire all of your offensive and defensive coordinators and bring in new guys. Who's Sirianna going to bring in? No. And it feels like a team where their window is closing, which is very sad considering where they've been and where they should be and just underperforming. I mean, last year that was basically a collapse. Um, and this year it doesn't feel like anyone wants that division. Um, and Washington's coming to play. So, I mean, and they lack, I'm guess They lack veteran leadership when Kelsey and, um, mm-hmm. shoot, there's a defensive tackle that retired. It's not Calais Campbell. It's, oh, geez. They're not fearsome anymore. The, 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 the Philadelphia tush push isn't going to, it isn't a thing anymore. That was supposed to change the lead league. Not only that, Jalen Hurts went from an MVP, like outplayed mm-hmm. Patrick Mahomes in the Super Bowl, yep. uh, but Andy Reid out coached him to a guy who's averaging two and a half turnovers a game. That's so weird. That's you just coaching. wonder what happened. Yeah, yeah. And at this point, I mean. You bring in a new coach with uh, Jalen Hurts. Is the coach really Jalen Hurts, or is it really a new coach? That becomes a scenario because where the money's at, coaches are meant to be hired to be fired. That's a tricky situation. Sean? I think they can fix it. I hope they can, because I always like Philly. Uh, But, you know, I mean, they're a hard fan base to love. Um, They're definitely an interesting group of people. Uh, But you know what? Fly, Eagles, fly. Got them birds. But we're going to move to Las Vegas at Los Angeles. Um, It looks like we've got two teams where they're heading toward mediocrity rather than uh, something that I feel like they'll have a postseason opportunity. Um, I'm going to take, at this point, I'm going to take the chart. I'm going to take the uh, Rams because I just don't think the, the Vegas ha- Vegas has anything right now in regards to uh, from the quarterback position. I'm hoping the Rams young guys that they drafted, they got the defensive tackle from Florida state and they got one other guy. And I apologize for not remembering him. I think Fisk is the uh, tackle from Florida state. They drafted high motor guy, very similar to Aaron Donald. Not that he is Aaron Donald. There's a learning curve. Um, I think the Rams, unfortunately, because of injuries, sort of deflated them. Um, But as they get healthy, as long as they can hang on long enough to not be sellers, I think they're going to turn it around because Matthew Stafford is a great quarterback in that system. Now, with that being said, Vegas didn't look bad against the Steelers. They moved the ball. They just had turnovers. They are minus 10 or 11, maybe even 12 this year because they turned the damn football over too much, and it puts their defense in a bad position. I think this game is going to be closer than we think. I'm doing Stafford, Williams, and Bowers. Okay. You're not starting the guy for any, you know, there's nobody really other than Bowers to start for the Raiders. And then in larger leagues, Alexander Madison, because wow. they did, if you watch their game against the Steelers and they went away from it, they did a play action a rollout where they did a screen to Madison. And then he also did a seam route in a will route, he was wide open and they went away from it. They didn't run those plays again. 
hopefully they look at the tape and do that because that works well and it fits well with the defense of the Rams. Okay. I think it's going to be close. I just give the advantage to the Rams because Stafford is just that good. Yeah. And you wonder, I mean, how many more seasons Stafford really has and then what is what are the Rams going to do to really recharge and really re, basically reform their base? Because of this at this point, I know they were basically a team of the now, and and it's going to be interesting to see where they go. But they've got you know, I hope it goes well and there's a good transition. They the still Rams have a window. The yeah, Cooper Cup is thirty. Puka is twenty two. And Puka, I'm waiting Stafford. for him to come back. He's in my other league, waiting for him to come back. That's the thing. It's just injuries have been painful for them. Uh, right. And can they maintain um, and be healthy? The defense is young. They had 10 picks last year. Mm-hmm. And I think nine of the 10 picks made the team. So I don't think they're in as bad a shape as we think. Um, I think what happens is they're going to draft a stud in the first round this year. And in the second round, they're going to draft that quarterback that they can develop because I think Stafford wants to play two more years. And Mike is amazing. I can see it. He's what, 37, 37, 36? He's got an arm. I mean, yeah, yeah. This is He's the in a good game we're coming up. And yeah, I mean, and, and quite honestly, in, in LA, uh, they've got a really good system and they've got a great coach. So it's a good place to play. Um, so hopefully that works. Okay. So the next game, uh, we've got Carolina at Washington. Oh, my goodness. I'm excited for Washington, man. It's nice to see Washington finally be a viable team again. Holy crumbs. Um, I'm I'm expecting big things for Washington. They're minus eight, and it's 52 points over under. I'm definitely taking Washington. What do you got, Sean? And this is why I call it the Big Daddy game. It's homecoming. Peyton Daniels showed against the Ravens. He is... He is clearly the rookie of the year. You can do all the Caleb Williams stuff you want, but the Chicago Bears, all of their wins are against teams who have how many wins? One. He went in, went brass tacks against a Baltimore Ravens defense that's stout, who has a good secondary, and they didn't have their starting running back. If they had that starting running back, they would have beat Baltimore. They would have beat Baltimore. And can you name a stud on defense for Washington? No. (laughs) Exactly. Dan Quinn's got a team defense playing, and they played well. I'm starting Daniels. I'm starting Robinson. I'm starting McLaurin. I'm not touching Dalton or the Carolina defense. And if you need to do any larger leagues, Zach Hurts is probably going to get a touchdown. And – I would start Chuba Hubbard because he might get something in garbage. Yeah. But Washington is rolling in this game. And anybody who's playing against Jaden Daniels, you're probably going to lose because he's going to have 46 points. That's awesome. I love it. I love it. I'm not sure why I love it, but it just, I feels like I'm glad to see Washington finally feel like a relevant team in that division, which I quite honestly, I, Really don't like any of the teams in the division, so I like Washington. Um, well, let's I see. Think it's we roll in. They're under good ownership. Finally, they've, yeah, they've kind mean, of washed away the sins the of the past. Dan Snyder was, mm, yeah. Uh, the sins of the past feel like they're washed away, which is finally nice. They're staying in Washington, which was another thing we were worried about. It's it's good to to like the Washington uh, Commanders at this point. There we go. Um, Although my wife thinks it's a dumb name, but I'm like, it's a military name. I'll take it. Um, Kansas City at San Francisco. This should be a good game. San Francisco finally woke up. They they look to be like they're finally getting back to, uh, you know, a decent team again uh, with some health. Uh, Kansas City continues to win despite, you know, not really dominating, but they are resilient and they are scoring when they need to. Um Wow, this is going to be a tough one. San Francisco's minus one and a half, 47 points over under. I'm going to take San Francisco just because of the home thing. It's just too, just too close for me. I'm doing KC. 
All right. Well. well, they're coming off the bye. Andy Reid is like a bazillion and two off the bye. The other problem is Mason's injured, Debo's injured, um, uh, Jennings is McCaffrey's injured. still on IR. Yeah, <laughs> McCaffrey's yeah. hurt. Um, when you have a team such as San Francisco, where you're so top heavy in salary, you don't have a bench. So the other thing is Hunt is coming into his own. Kelsey is coming into his own. Um, Am I starting the homes? No. Am I starting Purdy? No. This is going to be a defensive struggle, but also on defense, there are three or four players injured on San Francisco. Now I understand they've been dealing with injuries from day one. Yep. But here's the problem with Andy Reed's defense. You've got to have a experienced group of, or with Andy Reed's offense, the defense that that's playing against them has to have an experienced group who knows their spots. Problem one on the flip side, You've got Steve Spagnolo's defense where you've got to, you know, you got to pick up blitz coverages. You've got an issue there. And with all of those injuries, eventually next man up runs out. I got KC by 10. And I'm starting Kelsey Debo. I'm sitting um Kareem Hunt and Mahomes cuz I think they're going to focus on the run and try to put Kansas City in, in a down and distance game larger leagues probably Purdy and if Mason's healthy but there's just too many injuries with Phil, uh with uh the 49ers yeah I too mean, many it, it, I think at this point we're looking for them to really be late November for them to be at full strength and that's the right time to come and, into and- Health, but at this point, yeah. One last item. Brandon Ayuk has been non-existent. Yeah, I, know. I got that him was on your, my roster. That was, <laughs> that was your shame. Yeah, and he got a big paycheck, and yeah, to your point, he was late to the party, and yeah, it's, it's really not benefited him. Nope, and it's the typical thing. When you have a hold-in, it takes a while because they didn't go through training camp to get involved, and yep. sometimes they don't. Nope. So we, we got to talk about Sunday our... night. Oh, oh. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> no, that's okay. We're good to go. Hey, folks, this is what we do when we are po- we do this podcast. I will edit it out, John. Um, I'll put a note there. We'll do a quick. Uh, I'm so sorry. Two. No, it's okay. This is the fun of it. We could do outtakes um, at the end of the year. Oh yeah. <laughs> 122. I will put a edit point. There we go. Good to go. I'm going to put this on edit it there. Boom, boom, boom. I always say I always edit to make myself sound smarter. Take out the ums and I have still have plenty of those. So here we go. Um, so we move on to Sunday night. I think Carrie Underwood sings the song, Sean. Um, I don't know how much she gets paid for that, but man, it's pretty easy. I mean, I remember, I mean, who? I don't know who's doing the Monday night song. Is it, it's, is it Jelly Roll and Tupac? No, it's not Tupac. He's dead. I can't remember who does these songs anymore. I don't know. Um, does it matter? I don't know. I miss the old Hank Williams when it was like the first version, but oh well. Um, we go to Pittsburgh. We got A Rod showing up with uh, uh, his buddy from LA or, well, Las Vegas, um, showing up. Um, Devontae Adams. Is it going to make a difference? I don't know. Um, a Rod, you know, promoted a coach who's now the defensive, defensive coordinator, is now the head coach. His offensive coordinator he loved is now sitting in the box. Um, and Aaron Rodgers almost had 300 yards. So we'll see where he is at. But at this point, um, based on um, Pittsburgh's defense, and if Russell Wilson does start and can be competent, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, New York's had a fantastic defense as well. Um, But I like the coaching staff of Mike Tomlin better 
than whoever's doing New York at this point. So I'm picking Pittsburgh. Uh, all right. I got several things. Long term, do I think Adams and Rodgers are going to come together and are they going to bring it together to get to the playoffs? Yeah, the defense is too good. And Adams is going to convert third downs for Rodgers that Williams can't. So, And it's going to free up Garrett William, w- Wilson. And it's also going to free up Reese Hall. I think in the long term, not this week, but going forward, yeah, if I've got Adams, I'm going to love Adams because he's going to get targeted. Now, remember, also Garrett Wilson has either the third or second most targets in the league from a Rod. The, the part that Adams brings to the game is possession. And it, if you were to ask an NFL cornerbacks, who has the best route running Adams is number one ahead mm-hmm. of Jefferson. Yeah. And it's, it's basically the same offense they played with in uh, green Bay. Exactly. That part is it happened this week? I don't know. The part that I think Pittsburgh is making a mistake, but a justified mistake is God fields. When I watched the game, <laughs> the dude against Vegas, it was first and 10, three straight passing plays. And he airmailed open people and he did it. God, I want to say six, seven passes did he run and light it up yeah i think he had two touchdowns and ran for whatever but the problem is is tomlin knows that that type of game is going to win the playoffs i need a guy who can make the throws i mean there were two screen passes where he just didn't make the throw now i'm like Okay, Tomlin, you hired Arthur Smith, who did a terrible job in Atlanta, but revived, um, uh, God, the former quarterback of Miami in Tennessee, uh, Tannehill. Yep. His career. And that's how he got hired as a head coach for the Falcons. Eh, He hasn't made fields any better. And I get where... Pittsburgh's like, you know, Fields is running. He's got 10 touchdowns, one interception. But Tomlin's like, okay, from a playoff perspective, that's not going to work. No, and not, they're four and, and, two, they're tied for first. And the Jets are a hell of a defense, too. So um, it will be a tough game. It will be a tough game no matter what quarterback they're throwing in because obviously Wilson. Yeah, Wilson at this point is. I mean, he he can throw, just not very far. He's got to take advantage of his experience. Uh, a lot of um, a lot of interesting play choices will make for a successful team. Not trying to win the game with hail, hail marys and things like that. He's not. He's not. Let he's me not Aaron Rodgers. Mm-hmm. Would you throw him in? in this game against a really, really good defense in the Jets? Or would you ride it with the guy who's comfortable in fields? I know you've got flaws, but throwing him against the Jets defense, would you do that? That's the hard part. I mean, if, if, if the pocket collapses, I don't think Russell Wilson can do anything. That's a problem. I feel like that pocket is not going to hold. I don't think their offensive line is going to be strong enough to manage. And I just don't think Russell Wilson can move and make really reactive passes. I mean, he's not Aaron Rodgers. If he was Aaron Rodgers, maybe I'd say different. I don't know. I think Fields probably has a better has a better chance for success against a hungry defense because we know he can. He's going to be. St- going to make some bad decisions which obviously they get turnovers right. against but if they're going to have to deal with a pocket collapsing i just feel like we're going to look like kirk cousins when he can't move and he can't think make anything happen it, and it just looks like oh god we paid how much for this guy so 
that's my worry. Let me ask you. At, yeah. W- one other question. Sure. Are either one of them on the Steelers next year? I mean, unless Fields turns it around, no. Because I think Russell Wilson is a transactional, I got you on a coupon <laughs> at hy V. And uh, yeah, I don't want your contract. And Fields, at this point, he is going to be, is, is he still on his rookie contract next year? Uh, his contract, they're both unrestricted free agents. Oh, um, oh no. Then I don't I, want either of them. See, where I struggle is, uh, yeah, I agree with you. Um, uh, no, this isn't um, like this isn't like um, um, this isn't like an old quarterback, um, you know, coming in who's just looking for the right team to finally win, like Tom Tom Brady. I feel like Russell Wilson is not in that position where he's the goat and he just needs to be in a good position to win again. Yeah. I don't know. I feel very, very transactional with these guys. If I'm the Steelers based on the defense that I have and how they draft, I am going to do something very unsteeler like, and I am either going to trade for a quarterback on a team that you think could benefit you, or I'm going to do some mortgaging, but this is not a great quarterback class. Uh, They're sort of in limbo. This is a tough one. And I think they're good enough to make the playoffs because they're four and two. Mm -hmm. But I am not extending Russell and I'm not sure I'm going with Fields. Fields is a stat magnet, but I can't make basic throws. No, this feels where Arizona is with Kyler Murray. And we'll get into that. It's very hard for Pittsburgh because they've been how long without Ben Roethlisberger? I mean, it's been five years, Three? four years. No, no, Three. no, because uh, Ben um, Ben Roethlisberger retired. Then they drafted Kenny Pickett, who's the backup to Philadelphia. Yep. Kenny yep. Pickett was the starter for two years, and then and they should have never went with Kenny Pickett. Yeah. That's a, that's a shame because I, I I think with Pittsburgh they you know I, I think their leadership is defensive focused versus quarterback they don't have a quarterback guru on their team, um, and that's a challenge. I mean, so what who would they bring in next? I don't know. I don't. But in terms of uh, a front office, I would take Pittsburgh all day long though. Oh yeah, I mean. I mean, if you think about their head coach, Mike Tomlin has never missed the playoffs in his career. He's got two uh, what two he's Super Bowl wins. Playoffs. He has never missed the playoffs. He's got one Super Bowl win, but he's okay. never been under five hundred. But what I would do, and this is not Steeler like, it might be time to do a gut down trade, TJ Watt for a first round draft pick or two Ooh. Ooh. rebuild move up in the draft B- because they've got to get that guy. And this draft, I'm not doing Quentin Ewers. I'm not doing Sanders. I'm not doing Carson Beck. There isn't a stud. And well, quite honestly, if I am a, franchise that's sort of in like Carolina I'm setting myself up for Arch Manning well if you think about it I mean they went from what you have to go from Terry Bradshaw very inconsistent play at the Steelers 
you know, they had, you know, you know, subpar play, nothing great. And then you go to Ben Roethlisberger. It's not like it's Green Bay where you go like, oh, we've got the quarterback coverage for three generations or whatever. Um, so the fact that if they could get a generational quarterback, like with Ben Roethlisberger and Terry Bradshaw, that's sufficient because they can be, it, it's like Pittsburgh's like Minnesota um, where they're good enough, but don't do great unless they've got a great quarterback where Minnesota is like Ben, like good enough with rent a quarterback uh, and now it's time to have a uh, franchise quarterback. And it feels like Pittsburgh's been rent a quarterback since um, Brotsberger, which yeah. hasn't, hasn't been that long. Right. But they were rent a quarterback since Sherry Bradshaw. So um, we'll see what happens. But at this week, yeah, it's going to be interesting, but it's going to be the Sunday night game. Um, I'm hoping Rodgers um, does not look good, but that's my bias. Sorry. Sorry, folks. Uh, we go to Monday night's game, Baltimore at Tampa Bay. This should be a fantastic game. We got a four and two versus a four and two. Uh, I feel like the rust is off both these teams. They're looking good. Um, Baltimore is minus three and a half over and under almost 50. And at this point, I've got Baltimore. I feel like they are feeling it. Um, and everything is finally chugging along and they're in a good spot. But it could be it could be tight. I mean, this is going to be a tight game. I, I, I feel Tampa like Bay. this. You have Tampa Bay. OK, uh, what's the difference? Maker? Here's why. Yeah. You have a rookie quarterback without the number one running back. They were in the game. They were in the game all day long. Jalen Daniels tore up that defense. They also, on defense, don't really have a good defense. Tampa has all of that. Name, okay, you got Terry McLaurin. Great, okay. What does Tampa have? They got a mobile quarterback, not as mobile as Jalen. Same accuracy, but I have got three options. I've got a better running back I've got a better defense and Baltimore didn't blow them out and it's on the road down in Tampa I'm not sure it's an automatic because what what Washington doesn't have is Vita Vea you got a 350 pound fat guy. 350 pound. And you've got a safety in Antoine Winfield Jr. You've got pass rushing. And what Baltimore didn't have to deal with is the fact that they've got three receivers. You got Godwin, you got Evans, and you've got uh, Tank out of the backfield. I'm I'm not sure everybody should be giving this game to Baltimore, and I'm really surprised that people coming out of the game against Washington and saying, oh, wow, Baltimore is the AFC at 3-2, and two, right? 3-2 three and two or 3-3? Three and 4-2. Three or- four and 4-2. Two. Four and two. Both are 4-2. Four four and two. Two. You should be giving them the number one seed to beat in the AFC. I think Tampa's got enough, especially with Tristan Wirth, um, the kid out of South Dakota, the fact they got a center. I'm not 100% sure they're going to walk in and run away with this. It's a great point. I Tampa. mean, all right. It's a 7-15 game. Um, I'm assuming the weather is okay. On, My sister, I mean, it's on you, isn't it? Plus. Oh, good. But for starters, I've got Henry, I've got Lamar just because they're going to get touches. Mm-hmm. I've got Evans and Godwin as starters from Tampa's side. I'm not starting Andrews. I just, you just can't. I don't know what to do with Flowers. 
in larger leagues, I've got Baker and Bucky. I think Bucky is going to be able to run against Kath. Um, but bigger question. Uh, your sister is still in her house. She is. Yeah. Though the worst thing they had is a refrigerator that's now not working. So they're going to get that and everything's fine, which is just kind of crazy. Um, seems like Tampa Bay was largely untouched. It was St. Pete that actually got more of the brunt of it. So Tampa Bay should be fine. So what are you doing here? Who are you? So, so that's, that's the hard part. I don't really have much in regards to that team. So in regards to, um, I do have Zay flowers from Baltimore currently starting with wide receiver. Um, because other than that, Sean, I don't have much. I've got Rashid Shahid. He's out. Nico Collins, he's on injured reserve. Um, and that's it. And then I've got Tariq Hill as my flex. So I could swap out, say, Flowers for Tyreek Hill. But then at that point, I'm looking at Tony Pollard or Zach Charbonnet as my flex players. So mm, I feel like I've got to start, say, point. Flowers and Tyreek Hill. So, yeah, yeah that's about agree. it. I don't have much else there to go with. So, um, but it should be a fun game. I mean, Tampa Bay, the fan base there is going to be feel good after like, you know, um, missing out on uh, the bad stuff from the, the storm. So, but yeah, I, I'm just feeling Baltimore. I don't know why I just watched Lamar Jackson. I just feel like that guy makes miracles happens, but I may have been wrong before, Sean, I'm here to give you like the craziness and then you talk me down. So you've given some good reasons to not believe in Baltimore. So then we go to the last game of the week. Los Angeles at Arizona. I just feel like Arizona is like the four loco team. That's the team that you don't trust. They, 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 they sometimes are taking meth and that's okay, but it's not good. Long-term planned. Uh, Kyler Murray can't be trusted. Um, I don't know. I, I, I'm just going with Los Angeles. I mean, Jim Harbaugh, thank God he's okay. Um, he's got like a heart monitor now. He's taking some drugs. I think he's going to be okay. Um, I like the Chargers. I'm taking the Chargers. Yep, I am. Um, once again, after watching, I hate to sound like um, Daniel Jeremiah or whatever from the NFL Network where I watched the tape because I don't have anything special, but Kyler Murray's a one-read guy. One-read. He... Missed Marvin Harrison. He got I, just the whole thing with him is amazing um, in his erratic play. Um, for me, I'm Chargers all day long. And here's the reason why. J.K. Dobbins should be able to run for 150 plus yards all day long. And I think he's starting Harbaugh's for me. Gonna say, We're going to give you the rock and you're going to run. I'm hoping he has three touchdowns because I need it this week. The only person from Arizona I'm starting is James Conner. Just... Reason being is I think he's going to get cheap touchdown, the running back. No, uh, okay. Um, Harrison Jr., nope. I might actually cut him. Because Kyler Murray does not even look Oof. his way. That's rough. That's rough for a young, young, young wide receiver, a quarterback you just can't rely on. Yeah, I mean, he doesn't even look his way. He he is a one look guy, and then he rolls out and looks around, and then he tries to take off. I, yeah, this could be it for him. Because he might be time for him to go to baseball. That's I remember when he put that out there. He's like, ah, here's my team. Um, and he's just not a happy guy. He just doesn't seem like a team player. So it just seems like it takes one bad contract look or something like that, and he's he's ready to go. And well, Arizona doesn't have great leadership. They don't have great ownership. I don't know. I just don't feel like they can so, hook so that guy what, in, what's interesting make him believe. Is his his contract extension was after his third year and he said, I'm holding out. I need to be paid X. 
and or holding in. They gave it to him. It got Cliff Kingsbury fired, who's now rocking it as yep. the offensive coordinator for Washington. Yep. And I'm saying to myself, yeah, maybe you should have sided with Cliff and shit can the five, nine quarterback, you know, uh, I pray that the NFL doesn't follow the NBA where the players run, run the, the run the, the coaches. team. Yeah. Because dude, Really? You gave Kyler Murray that? These the athletes are too like, young. They don't have wisdom. They don't have, you know, they may have signs of greatness, but not necessarily leadership, especially as a quarterback. Um, and you're not humble. If you're not humble, then we feel like you are not going to be looking out for the benefit of your team. You're not going to take a cut. Like we've, we've got some of the great quarterbacks that did that because they know they're they're best paid and they're willing to, Sh- uh, negotiate their contract to make their team better because that will benefit them in the long run. I don't know if Kyler Murray is one of those guys when he thinks um, long range versus what do I need to do to benefit Kyler? Kind of like Ricky Henderson. I love me some me. That's uh, that's Terrell Owens. Ricky Henderson always talked in the first person. He's my favorite baseball player of all time. Um, I've got his Ricky card. Oh, well. Um, Sean, the only person I'm starting from this team is the chargers defense and i think that's i needed a defense because the bears are resting so i've got the chargers starting there i feel confident so you're not starting dobbins i am starting dobbins okay sorry i was gonna starting dive dobbins on running back yep nope yeah he may have two bills because harbaugh is gonna run him yeah, Dobbins was great. He got me 18 points last week. He's been highly, uh, uh, basically dependably uh, getting me about 16 points a game. So I'm very excited about that. So that is, um, if we look at this, that is our last game of the week. So with that, Sean, it's going to be an interesting week. I think there's going to be some good games. We're still in London. I think this last London game, thank God it's over because that's very early. And if you make a pick, it makes people's wave of their rosters really touchy so with that um sean i will just tell you who i'm starting you tell me if i'm wrong uh because i don't have a lot of great stuff on my bench uh for week seven i'm starting jared goff ken walker the third jk dobbins drake london zay flowers brock bowers tyreek hill in my flex position chargers defense and young ho ku as my kicker i'm benching rashid shaheed he's out uh, Nico Collins, I injured reserved. DeAndre Swift is on a buy. Tony, Pol- Tony Pollard, Zach Charbonnet, Geno Smith, and Bears are on a buy. All right. So I'm going with Burrow, QB, Dobbins, Holland, Barkley. I'm not feeling good about that. Metcalf and Williams. I don't know what to do at tight end. Who do you got got right now? I got Tucker from Green Bay, but I also could pick up um, Evan Ingram. I just think Evan Ingram's the only play for Jacksonville. If they get a score, it's probably going to be Evan Ingram. I don't like to play that. Played well last week, though. He played well last week, but previous weeks uh, has been inconsistent. Well, he was out week one, got injured. Came back, yep. had 10 targets for 104. Mm-hmm. Don't know what to do. I'm going to start the Steelers' defense. Nice. Just I because like they get turnovers. I got to get a win this week. So what do I do at tight end? I, ju- I just, I'm like. Start, tick, start Tucker. Start Tucker. That's my okay, recommendation. Bay. And then say, go from there. Because I think... The the problem with Tucker, bud, is he's questionable. Oh. Mm. Okay, pick Evan Ingram, then. Go get him. Go get him. He may snake bite you, but you know what? If he's healthy, that's better than a questionable. I hate the questionable. It it it, it It's a dooming thing, because it's like, when are you going to tell me? Is enough time to make a play? So you're going to have to either... Right. And you have to pick him up, right? Ingram? 
I will, but I can do it at game time. Okay, that's fine. So I would say start them if you can, um, unless something changes and turns Tucker into questionable or uh, available. Go with Evan Ingram. I think you're right. Um, I've never been in this situation because I'm three <laughs> and three. I'm yep. ranked of the 10 teams. I'm sixth, but from three to seven, we're all mm -hmm. three and three. So got I got to get a win. You're in great shape. Yeah. Um, uh, I mean, and I can tell you from this week who I'm playing. I'm playing um, one of the worst teams in the league, but he's one in five. Um, he's playing Brock Purdy, Ramondre Stevenson, J Jordan Mason, Jalen Waddle, Stefan Diggs, even Ingram, Jamison Williams, Ravens defense, Austin Siebert. Um, currently, um, I am at 129, and he is at 117. So I'm, good, I'm in a good position, but you know what? I've been burned before. Yeah. Well, we're going to have to, I, I'm going to have to, geez, I got a lot of work to do. This is going to be fun, Sean, um, because it's going to be one of those weeks where I feel like the league is finally starting to feel like what it's going to become. Uh, we're right. in the middle of the, the the second chapter of the NFL, which is going to be very fun to watch. We have some good games. And at this point, um, let us know where you're at with your teams, folks. We'd love to hear about it. And once again, we're looking for someone to join us on a future episode and talk about their league, what they do different, their their methodology for picking teams, and we'll see how that goes. So I will hopefully have someone I can bring in because I'll make a lot of fun. So, Sean, this is week six, going to week seven. I'm excited. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, with that, though, tell people where they can find you or follow your brilliance in the world of fantasy football. Well, you can find me on Discord. You can find me on Twitter. Um, I believe it's NYSSP. Um, but if anything, just uh, reach out to the Discord channel and we'll uh, definitely answer your questions. I, too, Todd, am looking at picking up a person to join us for uh perfect uh additional fantasy football insight um but we would love to have anybody on the discord channel reach out and have you on to just talk about where you're at with your team what you would do i mean we all do this for fun but by all means, please reach out. It's it's fun. Uh, it's great to see other people's perspectives. And uh, we look forward for, to hearing from you. Absolutely. So, folks, uh, you can follow me at Tioxtra, at Secret Unite, on the threads, at Instagram, where you can DM me if you want, which is amazing. You can follow us on SecretFringeUnite.com, at our Discord uh, if you want to check out our Patreon, once again, one week free trial for all the fun there. And you can join our, we have a, a, a separate channel for all things sports at Secret Friends Unite as well. So folks, hopefully you enjoy this world of fantasy football. It's fun. And that's exactly what it should be. And making the world of football more enjoyable every week. The players, the points, the goofs. So with that, I want to say, enjoy some football and skull. This podcast is part of the Secret Friends Unite podcasting network, available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and podcast services around the galaxy, as well as video on our YouTube channel. You can support Secret Friends Unite by becoming a Patreon member, get bonus programs and more over at patreon.com slash secretfriendsunite. Join our Discord community for even more discussions on all things geek. For all the latest updates on Secret Friends Unite, make sure to follow us on threads at secret.friends.unite and visit secretfriendsunite.com. Find our merchandise at TeePublic and Redbubble. Thanks for listening and may the force live long and prosper.